Hi, um, I'm going to talk to you right now about the payments industry. I just want to give you a quick overview of the payments industry and the six core systems that make up the payments industry in the U.S. Um, now, payments is a thing that we deal with every single day. We're buying and selling stuff um, all the time. We're using different technologies to do it. And often we don't realize that we're using different technologies and different systems when we buy um, something. So let me go over the six core payment systems today in the United States. Um, pretty much it's similar around the world, although we tend to have uh, you know, more built out systems than you find in some parts of the world. Now, the first core payment system is good old fashioned cash. This is one of the primary means that people use to um, buy things. This is one of the primary means that we have of transferring value from one person to another or from one business to another and so forth. How does it work? Well, you all pretty much know how it works. I've got some, I give it to you, you take it, value has been transferred, that's it. Cash is warranted by the government that issues it. We call this a fiat currency, F-I-A-T. Um, it is created by fiat, right, by just the word of the state issuing um, these notes. Um, <clears throat> and cash is also interesting because, this might sound a little weird, but you'll understand why this is important in a second. The cash system isn't owned by anyone. The cash system is something that is created by governments and it's not under any corporation or individual's ownership. In a way, this, is, this belongs to all of us. The system behind cash belongs to all of us. Okay? So we have cash. That's the first system. Um, people in the payments industry often call this a virtual system because it's not like there's any like networking infrastructure or anything behind this. There are these pieces of paper that come out um, that are issued by um, the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve has the authority um, to tell the Mint to create these things and the Department of Printing and Engraving in the United States designs them. Um, but that's sort of it. No high-tech anything here except, of course, in the business of cash handling and cash transport and cash sorting. So there are businesses that insert themselves into what's called the cash cycle to deal with things like counting bills and, and transporting bills and, and storing them securely, but cash is our first payment system. The next one um, is the checking system. And I have a friend's checkbook here. I am covering up all of the numbers um, on the bottom. I've also covered up her address so that you can't um, steal her money. But the checking system is the second core payment system in the US. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever written a check or how many checks you will write in your life. Checks are slowly on their way out. Um, this is basically a, a system, paper-based system, where I, um, it says on the check, pay to the order of, and I write the name of the person I'm paying. There's a box for the amount, there's a place for the date, a place for my signature, my address is on top, my bank's address is down there as well, and at the bottom where I've covered it up, is the routing number and of the bank, so the bank's unique identification number, and then my account number, my own unique identification number. All you really need to access my bank account are those numbers. Um, that actually makes checks a sort of risky form of payment. If um, you have a blank check lying around, you're basically leaving your bank account exposed to anyone who wants to try to get into it. Now, there are some safeguards. Um, the bank will probably alert you if it receives a check off your account uh, that looks a little fishy. Um, but this is our, our second system. The checking system also is not owned by anybody. Right? All the banks um, are authorized to issue checks. The checking system is regulated by the US Federal Reserve, but it's not a private system. This is an open system that all banks participate in. That's checks. Now, the, the next two systems are systems that we tend to probably conflate. We don't usually separate them out anymore, um, but they are separate and they run on separate infrastructures, entirely separate networks, even though for most of us, those two networks seem to touch one another in the physical object that we use to pay. And what I'm talking about are um, credit cards, and here is my MasterCard. I'm covering up the number so you can't steal money from me. I'm talking about credit cards and 
um, debit cards. And there is my debit card also um, branded by MasterCard. Now here's the thing. The credit card networks, MasterCard, Visa, Discover, and American Express, each run on their own network. They each have their own separate network infrastructure. And when you use this card, you're tapping into the credit networks, into, again, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, or American Express. That's basically it. Those are the credit networks. They are um, four interoperable sets of rails. We call them payment rails, like railroads, um, for transferring value using these networks, okay, credit. Now, the debit networks originally didn't have the MasterCard or Visa branding on them. They were their own separate things. And where they came from was from individual banks that were setting up automatic teller machines and then letting their customers access the network that the automatic teller machines were using to make payments. So for instance, back in the day, my debit card wouldn't have the MasterCard logo on it. It would just say debit and I could use it at an ATM to take out cash, and then gradually the banks allowed consumers to use these same cards over the debit networks to um, pay for stuff directly at the point of sale in a supermarket or something. So debit runs on a whole separate set of rails from credit. Now, as you can see, you know this card here is both a credit card and a debit card. So at the point of sale, I will be offered a choice, usually by the merchant, who will say, do you want to pay by credit or debit? Depending on what I answer, the transaction is routed over an entirely different set of infrastructures. If I say credit, this gets routed over MasterCard. If I say debit, in this case, and you can all take your credit cards and flip them over and check and see what yours has. But in this case, if I say debit, you'll see down here, you won't be able to see this, but trust me, it says it, it says Cirrus. If I use debit, it'll be run over the Cirrus network, which is an interbank network um, that also runs the ATM machines. Okay? So credit is using the infrastructures created by Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and Discover. Debit is using the networks created by the banks that have names like Cirrus. And I have another one here um, that is on the the plus network, again, I don't want to reveal my number, but you can see that it's, it's the plus network. That's a different network altogether on um, um, the debit rails, okay? So we've got checks, cash, credit, and debit. And again, even though we're using the same card often for credit and debit, those are different systems. Um, and then we have two more super important ones. Um, there is something called the Automated Clearinghouse, or ACH, the Automated Clearinghouse. The Automated Clearinghouse is another interbank network that basically facilitates direct deposit of things like your paycheck or um, di direct withdrawal out of your account when you do something like pay a bill automatically online. When you do that and you're not using a credit card number or a debit card number, what's happening is the ACH, the Automated Clearinghouse, is being pulled into action to transfer money directly out of your account and into the account of somebody else or into the account of a merchant. The ACH is old and clunky, and there isn't really very much to show you to represent it, but I do have here an old um, ACH authorization form. Um, this is the form that you would fill out to authorize uh, someone to um, pull money out of your account or put money into your account. Now notice the ACH only works if you have a bank account. Okay? You need to have an account in order to use the ACH. And the ACH is pretty much behind the scenes in a lot of what we do. So if you receive pay from your employer and you never actually receive a paycheck, a physical check, but instead every month or every week the money is automatically put into your account, they're using the ACH. Most income payments um, take place over the ACH. If you set up a direct bill payment so that every month the cable company reaches into your bank account, again, not your credit card, but into your bank account, what you've done is allowed it to use the ACH. Um, PayPal is a service that gives you the choice of either having the funds that you're sending via PayPal be drawn off of your credit card account, in which case PayPal is using the credit card rails, or off of your debit card account, in which case it's using the debit rails, 
or you can set it up to directly pull out of and push into your bank account, in which case it's using the ACH. The ACH is a weird thing. It is not really public and not really private. Um, it's a federally mandated system that all the banks and credit unions participate in, and the banks and credit unions together have empowered a separate organization, a nonprofit called NACHA, the National ACH Association, which governs the ACH. Now, I just underscore that simply because the, the credit and debit systems are private. Those are privately owned systems owned by companies called things like Visa and MasterCard and Cirrus and Plus. The ACH isn't really owned by anybody, like cash and checks, um, but it's this kind of funny hybrid because the banks and credit unions all participate in it, um, and in a sense they could be say, said to own it, but um, it's this nonprofit, NACHA, that runs it. Now the last system, the sixth core um, payment system in the US are the wire services. And um, you're probably all familiar with Western Union as an example of the wire services. These are old, old systems that had their beginnings in the telecommunication networks in the 19th century, quite literally in the telegraph and telephone wires that were stretched across the country uh, to carry um, signals, messages, eventually voice, and um, money or information about money. So Western Union is a wire service. It's not a bank. It's not um, something that is running between banks the way the ACH is. Um, it is a private system. It's not a public system. It, it's owned by the company Western Union. And um, it is its own set of rails, its own network infrastructure. So when we talk about payments and the payments industry, just to recap, we're talking about six core systems, cash and checks, which aren't owned by anybody, credit, which is a private system, private networks, things like Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and Amex, debit, which even though it looks like credit, runs on a whole separate system, runs on a whole separate set of rails, the ACH, which is this funny, hybrid, weird interbank thing, the automated clearinghouse that allows for direct um, deposit and direct bill pay, and the wire services, Western Union, um, again, running on its own network. Those are the six core payment systems. The payments industry is basically the industry that deals with each of those systems at every single step of the value chain and every single step of getting value to move from point A or person A to point B or person B. Thanks.